Welcome Puerto Penasco fans and community to our little, our little chat we have. Um, we have, we have today uh, with us uh, Sammy Kisiker. She's a writer and co-founder at Rocky Point 360 and she has also translation services. Um, we have also with us America Marquez, owner at Best Rentals and we also have Jerry Gaona, which is having a few technical issues. So I'm, I'm just gonna help him really quickly here while I'm helping uh, uh, Jerry. Uh, I'm just gonna invite uh, uh, Sammy to introduce herself. Uh, just tell us a little bit about yourself, uh, how long you've been living here in Rocky Point, uh, what you do, tell us, tell us all about you. Give us, uh, Sammy, I can't hear you. Hi. Okay, there you are, gotcha. So thanks for doing this. It's been a couple good weeks of really good conversations with different people in town. My name is, uh, my name is actually Chandra, Chandra Kisecker, and uh, most people know me as Sammy, is my nickname. Uh, my husband, Polinio, who is an architect here in town, uh, originally from Cuernavaca, he's originally from Cuernavaca. We have been here since 2001, uh, here in Penasco, so almost 20 years. And I'm originally from the Southwest. I was born in Colorado and lived also on the East Coast in New Jersey and then in New Mexico and studied back on the East Coast in Massachusetts before I ended up in Cuernavaca to study um, Spanish, <laughs> to study Spanish and, and uh, work for my college degree at the time. But we've been here in Penasco since 2001, where I have been an English teacher, Spanish teacher, 
and a certified translator. And in 2011, we started RockyPoint360.com. Thank you. And Jerry got connected. So we're going to, we're going to, we're going to let the ladies uh, introduce themselves first and then we'll go with you. Okay. No, fine. Thank you. All right. Uh, America Marcus, uh, tell us a little bit about you uh, again, how long you've been here in Penasco, uh, what you do. Hola everyone. Uh, well, my name is America. I'm from here. I've been living all my life in Rocky Point. Um, what I can say, I love to be, working on the rentals and the customer service. And I opened my office like four years ago and I've been working on the rentals for the last 15 years. Thank you. All right, uh, Jerry, tell us a little bit about you. Hi, I'm Jerry. <laughs> Jerry Gaona, probably everybody know me. Yes. Um, I'm part of the owner of the three bars that we have, uh, Sharp Bite, Manny's and uh, Tequila Bar. Part owner of Manny's, of course, um, for uh, giving the good opportunity. And uh, thanks to you guys for the support. And uh, any questions that you guys want to know, I'm here to provide them. Perfect. All right, let's get into the, the questions we, we, uh, we had. So we'll start here with Sammy. Um, so the big question is, when is Rocky Point opening for business? Like the beaches, pools, hotels, what's the plan right now at this time and moment? This moment right. in time. So currently the plan, as the city has laid out uh, several times, first in proposals and then each step of the way, um, they, they modify or confirm different things. Uh, the first part of reopening Penasco was from May 18th through the 31st. And that was for different businesses that uh, do by appointment only, for example, or in different stores where they could have a re reduced number of clients, I think it was maybe two, as well as at the time, takeout and delivery only options for restaurant restaurants. We are now in phase two, and we actually are in phase two, again, it was confirmed today, that restaurants and, uh, for example, like taco places and pizza, pizza parlors, I guess, as well as furniture stores can open, but at 40% capacity. And so, What's really important to note both for phase one, phase two, and phase three, and kind of right now going forward, is that any business, any individual that wants to reopen their activities here in Penasco has to go to the city to sign a letter of commitment with the, with the uh, Office of Economic Development. And that's like the first step. And then the next step is they will set up a time for you to take part in a course, which is a training course. A lot of us have are working from home. So, I mean, I haven't done it. I'm still working from home. Um, but there's a training course and you get a certificate from that. And then they have to set up a time to go and sanitize your place. And so it's not just that the date comes and that you can open, you actually have to take steps and know the information beforehand. And this is for any business, uh, anyone wanting to open, like as the process goes. As far as tentatively, because things could change in two weeks, but the plan is for June 16th for the city to be open again to open to welcome visitors. Um, I'm not going to go out on a limb and talk about the beach or pools because the beach and, for example, the marinas are under uh, the beach, for example, is federal zone as well as the marinas so that through the port, um, through the harbor master who would be getting information from, from federal and state levels. And the pools, all public pools, first have to go through a test. This isn't for coronavirus, this is just actually amoebas in general. Um, they have to be approved to open by the state health office. So that's not really municipal, that is state. So there are different levels. So, we, so hopefully by June 16th, precisely when the town is looking to welcome visitors that the beach is open and the pools are open. But uh, basically every day changes and we will continue to update as we get information. So June 16 is still our target date. That's, that's awesome. And thank you for keeping us informed um, through Rocky Point 360 and through all the social networks. Let's go with, uh, with uh, Jerry. Um, what's uh, same question? Um, when are restaurants open, opening? I think they're already open. What's, uh, what's the plan there? Well, right now we're working out on, uh, um, on the protocols to make sure the safety and the safe department is give us the opportunity 
uh, and check to make sure all the customers are safe. We're gonna, they say they're already open, but we're gonna wait until Friday to open up just to make sure and confirm that every restaurant is uh, safe and uh, complete every health department rules they require. Uh, and this weekend, we're gonna be open up Manny's and La Oficina. Uh, those are the two bars that we're gonna be open so far. Since uh, uh, the old port called the Malecon, we're gonna be waiting into the new orders or the uh, tourist area will be uh, called. Right now for the safety area and um, for local business and to prevent safety and secure for that uh, health department, we're gonna be open up Manny's and um, La Oficina and work it out as a limit to people just to make sure that uh, we uh, clear up with the uh, rules in the health department. Mm -hmm. Good, good, following the guidelines, keeping everybody safe. Uh, America, uh, what about guidelines when it comes to uh, rental agencies? Um, what are we gonna do is, well, first thing I'm gonna sanitize my office with the certificate by the, by the city. And the protocol for what I'm gonna take is, um, we're gonna sanitize all each condominium and each apartment, each uh, house, and between any renters coming, we're gonna take at least one day between any rent reservation. So we take time to sanitize each unit to make sure we do it the right. We don't want to take any chance um, to get that virus here in Rocky Point because we are being very, very safe with, um, talking about another city. So that's what, I, what I'm gonna do is on my part, that's what I'm gonna do. It sanitize the condominiums, the houses, and we're gonna take between days between any reservations, and we're gonna take the protocols um, in the office and also in the units. Okay, and I imagine every travel agency or rental mm -hmm. uh, I think they're gonna business do. is all they're doing very similar. And yes, oh. this is gonna be the same on the check-in time. Mm -hmm. It's gonna be like. It's not like before everybody goes be on the front desk. We need to be one by one. Okay, by okay. reservation. Mm -hmm. Okay. Cool, cool. Um, we have one question, I think, from the audience. Uh, William, would you like to read that one? Yes, uh, I lost the name. Uh, just let me get it real quick. And Linda Plank. Yeah, Linda Plank. She was asking if uh, with the restaurants opening up, if uh, it's true that they're not letting kids into bars or restaurants. And if you guys could uh, set the record straight. Um, we'll start with Jerry for this one. Yeah. Um, yeah, there's no kids allowed um, under the 12 years old. That's the limit. Uh, if you're like over 13 and up, I think you allow with your uh, safety uh, mouse and not, um, also, they, they require uh, gloves. So the measure is that they're not an adult still, still under 18, but there are no kids allowed for 12 years. Okay. Anything, is that the same information you have, Sammy? Yeah, I, I don't actually have all of the guidelines that they're giving to the restaurant, specifically, mm -hmm. for example, in the course that they're taking. Mm -hmm. But um, bars specifically are, are not open. Um, for example, if it's restaurant, it's like restaurant with you can have drinks, but not bars. So that's, okay. that's, that's at least now here in phase two. All right. Oh, I see Russ Black is asking Sammy a question. Yes. What's, uh, go for it. Russ Black was asking if it's true you're doing any uh, fashion model things anytime soon, Sammy. Um, so, so during this time, we've all been, uh, in quarantine and doing different activities. Um, there have been different videos, for example, the OCV put out some videos for, with, uh, a number of people around town, uh, to send out messages of take care of yourself and come back soon, as well as, uh, Naomi Black is putting together a virtual fashion show. And at one time she had made a skirt, a Rocky Point 360 skirt. So yes, Russ. <laughs> <laughs> I don't even know when that is actually. So, but I sent in my clip. Okay. Um, 
going back to one of the questions we had for you, Sammy, uh, what guidelines will have to be followed by not just residents, but by visitors? So for example, right now, the city opened up a um, possibility for residents. And when we talk about residents, they're, they're talking about full-time residents, that your home is here in Penasco. And when the, the roadblock health filter went into effect, uh, people were not in town. There is a window for them to come back, uh, which it ends on Sunday. And you need to provide photo ID as well as proof of residence. So for example, an electric bill a, that's in your name that matches your ID and, and uh, come to the health filter. There's a thermal, they have thermal cameras now set up. And so they'll take your temperatures or go through the, well, actually it's the thermal camera. And then right now for residents, it's also going through the sanitation tunnel that they have there. The, 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 um, if anybody's been out to the, to the roadblock, health filter, it is just this side, just um, south of the bridge, which is the turnoff to, to the, to like Mayan Palace or different areas. And then after the 16th, the roadblock will stay there, but when visitors are allowed to come in, um, the plan at the moment, as, as we've been um, told or it's been described different times, is that the thermal cameras will be used. There are there's one stationary camera and two portable cameras. And if there are any anomalies with someone in the car, then they will also take a digital, uh, use a digital thermometer. And if somebody still has a high temperature, then you will be given the opportunity or asked if you want to take a rapid test and, um, or ask to return um, if you, if you um, don't wanna take the rapid test. But this is only in the case of people. So like the majority of people we could think are not necessarily going to have high temperatures as uh, in a conversation with the mayor this past weekend. If you are planning to come to Penasco and you feel sick, please don't come right now. That That is just opening up uh, a whole can of worms that take care of yourself and help, take, help let us take care of Penasco. Uh, but so after the 16th, the sanitation tunnel will only be used, I think, at, at certain times, but not for everybody. But the thermal cameras will remain in place, and then they will also have a digital thermometer. And then the third step is the rapid test. Okay. Um, in the case of restaurants, Jerry, um, what guidelines would you recommend for people visiting the restaurants? Well, um, we have a lot of rules that uh, it's going to be announced soon. But uh, I would recommend that uh, they please just follow the rules or, or the health department they're asking. As far as uh, getting people closer uh, and stand the more than 10 people on the table or uh, getting people jumping to another table to the other. Where I know everybody wants to say hi to each other. Or everybody want to say, how you been? Or what, what have you been done all this time? We're just trying to follow that uh, the distance, the the healthy distance, and uh, that's what I told everybody to keep the bars going and keep the happy places open. Follow the rules. That's one of the main things that I told everybody. I know it's a little bit. A lot of people are gonna get bothered of being told, "Oh, please, uh, can you come back to your table? Oh, please, oh, do this or do that." I'm gonna do it. I want to make sure that he don't get sick somebody else if you are. We just want to make sure that, that you have a great place to be and everybody helped and uh, to just to follow the rules. Yeah, we have some really good questions coming up, but we have just one more question here for America. We were talking about uh, all these uh, guidelines also for the rental business, but something else came up that it's very interesting that we should all be aware. And that's, uh, um, what, what did we call it, America? Forgot the name. What did we call it? Uh, what, uh, rental scams that, that we should be aware of. Yeah. So I'm, I'm, I'm just going to let you talk a little bit about it. Because I didn't have the experience. Some people stop on my office, like, in the past. And they say, oh, you know what? The, that happened most of the time on the holidays, Okay. They stop and say, hey, I have a reservation and I rented them, let's say, example, uh, Las Conchas. 
and I transfer the money and I have the reservation, I have my page, I have my email. And when they come, nobody answered the phone. Nobody was in the place. The lot or the house don't have six. Okay, nobody know what it is. So this is like, like people need to be really, really make sure when they make any reservation, even when they do it like directly with the owner or directly with one person, make sure that's the right uh, person and the right information because that's not, that's not good for people. When they drive four hours, three hours, and they just come here to Rocky Point, and it's no reservation, okay? The, no the reason one. why we're, we're mentioning this information is because uh, a lot of the groups are being open, especially fans, fans and community, we're opening for people to post their rentals, but we do know it's been a problem in the past where people do uh, get, yeah, they get, they get scammed. So we, we wanna just recommend everybody to be aware um, just kind of do a little background check through Facebook, see if it's a real person, yes. um, and just ask the community, you know, yeah. and I trust this person. And that's, right. that's, uh, yeah, that's basically sometimes, what we wanted to sometimes say. Sometimes it's so good to be true. <laughs> yes. Can I, I, yes. Could, could I actually ask a follow-up question on that, Manny? Go for it. Um, for example, because of all businesses that are able to open right now have to go through the commitment letter, the, the training course, as well as the sanitizing, what information has been given to rentals, for example, because individual people who rent their properties are really are going to have to do the same thing or what type of recommendation would you give to people looking to rent and um, who they should be, for example, going through to make sure that they're meeting all of these health guidelines? Yes. Or I guess that's more a statement. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> but Sorry, I don't know I, if there have been like specific uh, in the training course, for example, for rentals that is addressing that because that, that as well as in a lot of other cities, um, I, I love to travel and I love to check out VRBO and Airbnb. And, but at the same time, for Penasco's reopening to make sure that everyone is following, ideally, um, these health protocols, it, have you been given any information as to, as to how they will, I don't know, monitor that at all? Yeah. Or we just hope people will do it. <laughs> <laughs> and make sure they, they re I mean, the reservation, they always pay in full before they get here sometimes because they, they say, oh, my credit card don't work. Okay, because they've been doing and booking or an Airbnb, and for some reason I don't know why they come and the credit card don't go through. Okay, and the reservation is for, for somebody else already. Okay, and they have the email printed by a month ago. <laughs> they don't check the reservation like one or two days before the arrival. Okay, they make the reservation like a month in, in advance. And they don't check with the credit card go through or anything, and they just come here, and it's no reservation. So just make sure before you come, have all your information, and check with the person before you arrive, before you come, before you drive. What what I understood from you, uh, Sammy, you were asking America if uh, there's a, uh, any information that rental companies are sending their their clients. Was that uh, not not for, not necessarily that? Um, for uh -huh. example, there are this rental talk, companies. This talking about the virus, right? Talking about measures uh, but, against it. Yes, exactly. Measures against okay. it, and all of the steps that local businesses are having to go through to be able mm -hmm. to reopen any type of business. And we're talking in this case, I'm talking about like well, rentals and rental companies. They're having to go through these steps. But if an individual mm -hmm. rents their unit privately um, is there any information that can be given to them and this is something also to take up with the city um mm -hmm. in the sense of how will that be monitored to make sure that they are also meeting those health guidelines so it's not so i mean ideally it would be go through a reputable rental company especially now mm -hmm. um would be my personal uh, recommendation, recommendation. Um, yeah. But also the people who do rent their own properties to make sure what it is you need to do 
to 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 not have any of those health concerns in case uh, uh, the civil protection unit is out and kind of monitoring that. So mm. that was more uh, of just kind of in the rental area. Yes. Have you heard anything? What America? I, no, no, they, they no. Um, what are they they gonna do? I mean, what they're gonna do is is just like on my on my. Let's say how they can explain. My English is not that good like you guys, so. <laughs> <laughs> You're good. You're doing good. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So that's what I said. It's just like um, I'm. I've been talking with my guests, okay, because I'm a small company. So I've been talking with my every single guest who are coming. I've been talking with them. I've been sending what I have from the city, you know, like oh. phase one, phase two, phase three, so they know what's going on here, okay? And also, I'm going to try to share a video on my face page or in my web page, how are we going to be sanitary the unit? So people know it before they get here, make sure we're going to do my part. I'm going to do my part, okay? So they need to be their part. And they know it before they arrive, there's gonna be a city control, you know, like they're gonna check before they come, make sure they are not sick, they don't they are okay, they are good, so they can come. Okay. So that's what I, I'm gonna do. I don't know if everybody's gonna do the same, hopefully. That's okay. a good invitation for anybody who uh, has a rental, maybe but one I'm or two. Gonna, yes. Uh, get get informed, just uh, keep everybody safe. It's, yes. Uh, the, you know, just just uh, be responsible with yeah, your business. I have, but, I have already a, a, a agreement with one company who is going to be sanitary every time, you know, the units. It's like the same when they may come, after they may come, the heat going to come too. So every reservation, and it's not going to cost much, much, okay? But I, I want to make sure the men is safe, the renters is safe, we are safe, okay? Yes. Because I'm from here. <laughs> if you mm. live here. Everybody lives here, you know what I mean? And it's same for the for the visitor, okay? They wants to enjoy Rocky Point. So we're all doing our our little parts. Yeah. Um, let's go through a few questions. Uh, William, do you have a few? Uh, yes. So this is actually three questions from one person. Her name is Kathy Van, and the first part is: Does anyone have an idea of how long these protocols will remain in place? Mm. Go ahead. The, uh, huh. There's, as far as an exact date, no. Um, the, uh, for example, the health protocols coming into town, I believe, will be there throughout the summer, because that would be kind of like our, our tourism summer season, which. Who knows what that will be like? But I have, I believe that the like checking the thermal with the thermal cameras or the digital and it also really depends on what happens both statewide and, and nationally in Mexico and in the US as far as where the majority of, of visitors come during the summer for example the majority of visitors in the past have come from different parts of Mexico including Sonora where there are a lot of um, the cases there are very different than here in Penasco where we have minimal cases so the health check out there will probably remain in place through the kind of the summer months schools um, if all goes well schools are are supposed to return about the middle of august and so possibly we'll know by then but as far as an exact date i don't see that <laughs> i don't know about the restaurants or the rentals or or kind of what the direction It'd be part of the new normal for, for how long for example the social distancing i i don't know it's a new normal yes yeah. It's going to be a new normal. Literally, Jerry, under the program of Mexico, it's called the new normal. <laughs> the norm. Jerry, do you, have a, do you have a comment on that? Yeah, well, like Sammy says, that, uh, we, don't know, we don't know what's, that, uh, what's the day or the end of this thing. I think it's the, it's the day is barely a start for us since we don't got that many cases. Um, like I said, this is, uh, uh, this is a good thing our mayor did. He did a great job to prevent not to kill, to prevent the whole town Puerto Penasco, what is coming. After you open those doors, you never know if somebody can get contagious or get sick. 
there's many people coming out of town or many people coming uh, from town that are already infected more than we are here in, Peña, in Puerto Peñasco. Um, we don't know the date that will exactly what it will come, but we know that uh, it will be more control and will be more facilities to be able to control this uh, contagious of COVID-19 that is that uh, it's going to prevent a lot of us as a tourist area and uh, tourist owners, or, I mean, uh, owners, uh, tourists that uh, uh, provider service, you know, as the owner of the restaurants, as at uh, rentals, I will say uh, it give it give us more um, more doors open to prevent more people get sick, and also to prevent more better service of help to the people coming here. Mm -hmm. um, we have a few more questions. Uh, uh, where was um, so Lauren? Nep says it would be great if, if the city would give guidelines and certifications for rental protocols. Um, I believe we are all as business owners will need to have uh, certifications and we'll have it posted somewhere in our business. Um, the guidelines we are required uh, to uh, teach either our employees or ourselves about uh, measures of sanitation and, and, uh, and prevention. So yeah, this is what's happening right now to all, all businesses. Um, William, any more questions? Yes, we also have, give me a second. Uh, um, Russ Black says, Jerry, should we have a beer this Saturday? Yeah, we should. <laughs> <laughs> I definitely need one, Black. You know that. <laughs> Sammy, do you need a deal? I'm, yeah, I'm, 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 so Rick, Rick Nichols asks, what are your thoughts on the effect of the current level of red and its potential effect on city planning? Okay. Go for it. Go for it, Sammy. <laughs> <laughs> so, so the, um, the, the, I know that there's a lot of confusion and daily, it's also something that for us, I mean, living here, but also trying to report as best we can um, as far as information, both here statewide, as well as, uh, I mean, locally, as well as statewide and nationally, because it is hard. It is sometimes uh, hard to read. Or, or to wrap our minds around because we're so far uh, north that we are still impacted by everything going on in the rest of Mexico. And so the national uh, alert stoplight, it's called, it will be issued every week. They evaluate, they have meetings with, with um, governors every week on Tuesday and Wednesday so that they can confirm kind of the next levels or if we're changing and, um, on Fridays, the national, the federal government will be issuing that. The thing with that is that the state governors are the ones who take that information because what it is, it's a risk level in the sense of, for example, in the US, there are times where there are risk levels that we're aware of and it might impact the way we travel, but we still travel. And so, for example, these risk levels are to say, what is the risk in the different regions or the different states and the governors and for example, they're meeting tomorrow, there's a meeting with, with mayors, all of the mayors um, in the state of Sonora with the governor to also share strategies that have worked better in some municipalities or where they've had more difficulties. And so it's, even though there is the federal risk um, stoplight or the risk alert, it's how that will be implemented here. For example, right now, and that was kind of why we had a bumpy entrance to phase two um, on Monday, but now we are into phase two with the restaurants being able to open at 40% capacity. Um, some of the things that were in the initial proposal back in May, uh, the, the local proposal uh, were not put into phase two. And so, and a lot of that also has to do with the, the local health advisory board and the business board kind of going over information and they moved some things to phase three. So currently, I mean, when they nationally, when they when they released the first map, I think everyone in the country was kind of taken aback because 
There are 32 states in Mexico and 31 of them were red. And one of them was orange, which is the next level. But there will be a new map on Friday. And that's just a way to guide states and regions as to where there are more outbreaks or more risk or more mobility and to cut back. So for example, if we all started in red, the only way we, the only direction we can go is towards orange. I mean, rather than to a different color back where we could stay red. But one of the questions will be is if we start moving both Sonora as well as states across Mexico, if we start going from red to orange to yellow, um, and then cases rise, we could go back to orange. And so that's where the state and the local municipalities are going to have to discuss what it, if that happened, which we hope it doesn't, um, what would happen. But currently we moved into phase two. We had a little bumpy ride there at the beginning, the first two days, but uh, today it was confirmed that the restaurants can have that 40% capacity. Hopefully my favorite taco place can open again. Um, at least to walk up and take out. <laughs> and so we'll, we'll see kind of where we go from here as the map changes. Okay. That's my take. <laughs> um, one really good question from Linnell. Um, she asks, and I, I really do not know this one. Will our passengers in our bands be required to wear face masks as we enter Rocky Point? Do we know any information on that? I really don't know and really don't know what the transportation, for example, the shuttle yeah. service that's head out. Mm. Um, I don't know what type of protocol is going to go there because the business is actually in Arizona mm. and what they will have to do here. Um, because currently, but I mean, we're not open to visitors yet. Currently, we still have our, our maximum two people in a car, one, per that one person in the back, and you both have to have masks. Mm -hmm. Uh, situation and so for transportation once that opens on the 16th I'm sure there'll be new guidelines. What's the guidelines right now when it comes to bus services because I know they're reopened you do have to wear a mask right in bus services and so maybe it maybe it will be something similar um, I guess we'll just have to uh, get back to you on that one but now uh, William any more questions? Yes, we have Veronica Ariola ask, will all rentals and resorts open on the 16th? That's the tentative date. Uh, but I'm gonna start getting a reservation after June 22nd, okay? And then we're gonna keep posting because we don't know yet. With this tentative date, it's June 16th. Okay. What else do we have there, William? Um, as far as questions, I can't see anymore. Okay, uh, Courtney is saying, so no kids under 12 allowed in places like Manny's Rect, or are those also considered restaurants? Okay, yeah, there's no kids allowed. Um, uh, Manny's or Rec or either uh, tequila that, uh, so if it's a restaurant, is it allowed? If it's just a restaurant? No. Okay. All right. So no, no kids allowed in any of these. Um, and because bars aren't, I mean, if you're going for a bar, it, they're not open. I mean, it's no. the restaurant with food. I mean, with food, with um, drinks you can have, but not, uh, for example, bars and nightclubs. No. As bars are not, uh, are not in this space. Okay. Charlotte Kelly says, does anyone know how many entry points to Puerto Penasco will be for people or only the Sonoita Road? So are we opening all the roads or just the Sonoita Road as main entrance? I think Any takers? I think they're going to be open Caborca and San Luis until I know it. When they open the city on the phase three. Okay. Okay. I, um, I, think we'll, I think we'll wait for that information yeah. because they're still going to be screening people yes. and there are only three thermal cameras and uh, I'm not sure if they're going to put them in different places or channel all the entry to one spot. Yeah, they're still, uh, they're still working out on, uh, on the way to make the most space, especially here at the entry of Puerto Peñasco, that's what, I, that's what we know. Okay. 
one more question here, Lynn. Did we ask Linda Plate, William, uh, about the fishing one? She says, so fishing is under state or federal? Same with sports courts. So is fishing under state or federal? Uh, uh, it's federal. Federal, okay. All right. Um, I think that's all the questions we have for today. We just when will the port? One. Okay. Oh, yeah. I was going to read that one. When will the port open for fishing? Eric, Aaron Robinson Cook asks. It's okay if we don't have that information, we can just say we don't know. <laughs> well, the, the, the port for fishing, like, like Jerry just said, sports fishing mm -hmm. is um, federal. So it depends on when the, for example, the Harbor Master will get that information from the federal guidelines. That's the same with, uh, pretty much the same with the federal zone for the beaches, not to say that they're gonna coincide. They, they might be different dates. We don't have that information. There is fishing now, or for example, pangas, you might see some of the local fishermen out because that is considered an essential activity for food. But um, for, for personal boats or sports fishing, recreational fishing right now, not until federal guidelines. Mm -hmm. So, so uh, um, we kind of know that uh, Rocky Point 360 and Rocky Point Times had a direct line with the mayor a few days ago. Um, so Sammy would like to ask, uh, what's the mayor viewpoint on Rocky Point? What is his uh, desire? What, what's uh, during this pandemic? Well, I mean, his, uh, I, I think uh, everything he has said publicly was also, this was a, a meeting that we, we were invited to, not by the mayor. It was set up um, by Encantamate Towers, actually. And uh, as a way to, because Rocky Point Times and Rocky Point 360 uh, in English are some of our really kind of the main uh, information providers in a way to, to, for, for a lot of the English speaking community. And so that's why we were invited uh, more than anything. And uh, what he has said publicly and what he said there is his goal is to keep Penasco safe. Um, we, we can't continue to live though in a bubble and we also need the economic activity in order to have people come down and support the community but also being safe and so that's why everything has been gradual because it depends on how we do in the first phase to be able to get to the next phase or how we do in this phase to be able to get to the next phase his goal is um, his goal on the, the government page, on the government Facebook page, and all of his interviews and all of his uh, press releases, is that we can open to visitors on June 16th. And that will depend on how we do in the next couple weeks, um, both Penasco as well as the state, in the sense of going back to that, going back to that uh, map a little bit. But it, it looks, I mean, as a tourism area in Penasco, Currently, I mean, we have seven confirmed cases. Uh, and when we say confirmed cases, that also means that there's I believe, six recoveries and um, one person who passed away. And so it's not that we have seven active cases. It's something that, that once the cases are reported, I mean, they're reported as cases and sometimes they're not always followed up with the recoveries or the ones that are no longer active or that they were, um, um, not serious, for example, or hospitalized or, or things like that. Um, but I think his goal has been very clear in press releases and on the radio when he's been on the radio that the goal is June 16th. The Convention and Visitors Bureau as well is doing a lot of work with hotels and, and promotion looking at the 16th. And I think that that is all of our goal but in the meantime to stay safe and to follow the guidelines that the city has um, in the sense of yes there's a siren that goes off twice at 10 o'clock at night and it's frustrating and annoying um, yes we're wearing masks when we're out in public and but if you're in the car by yourself you have your mask kind of nearby but i don't drive with it when i'm in the car by myself um, there are things that are very different um, but at the same time, we're trying to keep Penasco safe 
And we are also positioned between cities where there have been outbreaks and there continue to be growing outbreaks. And so trying to keep Penasco safe and support each other, um, I think is the, the main thing, both for the mayor as well as all of us in business here. Yeah, um, Rick had a question about uh, conf confirmed cases, so we got that answered. Jared says, Jared Taylor, I may have missed from an earlier comment, but will beaches be open after the 16th F as well? We hope uh, so. We don't know. Yeah. We don't know. The federal, it's federal fall, like I said. Uh, we hope they open on the 16th, which is uh, we're going in the right way in good direction since we have seven cases. We're not that bad at all. But uh, if everything goes well, like the mayor says, and everything goes uh, on the same on the same following rules, we may be lucky, get the 16 lucky. So Mary Snyder is uh, asking, Sammy, could you explain the difference between bringing the true full-time residents back prior to June 16 versus owners wanting to come back? I think we talked about that, right? So just kind of going back to that a little bit, um, last week, I think it was the 27th or 28th, the city offered the opportunity, kind of a 10 day window, it's actually about 11, 12 days because it's through June 7th, for full-time residents who were outside of Penasco when the roadblock and health filter went into effect, uh, that are able to come down and their full-time residency is here, that they would be coming here. And one of the first things actually they have to do after going through a thermal camera um, is the, the city is taking their information uh, as far as their address, as well as the, the, there's a sticker for the car. And there's a letter of commitment that people are committing to basically self-isolate or quarantine for 14 days. And uh, but it's a way for residents, for example, there were a number of people who had maybe um, one of their sons or daughters had been studying in Mexicali or elsewhere and they weren't able to come back because of that, because of the situation. And so this offers a little um, opportunity for them to come back. But the goal is for the city that this is full-time residents, that you're, you're pretty much your full-time residency is here in Penasco and that you would be coming home to stay home and follow all the guidelines that are in place for all the rest of us that have been here for a uh, hundred years or so at this point <laughs> in quarantine. Um, but um, that is until the 7th. And then on the 16th is when, re so if you don't come before the 7th as a resident, then that, um, as far as we know, that that opportunity wouldn't be available again until the 16th. But again, yeah. as we get to Sunday, we'll see what information is put out by the city. We'll see what changes. Um, and uh, Sammy, we'll report it there in Rocky Point 360. Uh, William, do you have a question? Yes, Pam Thurner, forgive me if I pronounced that wrong, says phase three is June 16, which is when town opens to visitors and homeowners to come down. How does one come down since the June 22nd Order date is set for non-essential travel. So a border date is that in the U.S. side? I think that I think the twenty-second is for the U.S. side. Uh, that's a two different. That would be a two different question. So uh, first, mm -hmm. the state they, they say that uh, the twenty-second they're going to be open the borders for travel. And uh, but ourselves and here in Mexico to open up Puerto Pena is on the 16th. Now, um, confirmation the 22nd is for everybody, go whatever they want. If you want to go to Puerto Peñasco or somewhere else, that's going to be the 22nd. Our Puerto Peñasco will be the part of the all and confirm. What do you think, Sammy? <laughs> <laughs> you're you're a local resource, Sammy. You know everything. So so no, actually, this question came up this morning on the radio with with the mayor, um, because it, it the the U.S., Mexico, and Canada actually um, have a a limited travel for non-essential purposes, 
And, um, but within that, for example, U.S. residents or U.S. citizens as well as uh, permanent residents in the U.S. have always been allowed to go back. And when you're coming into Mexico, for example, between the 16th and the 22nd, we haven't heard of that, that limitation being extended. And so we'll also, we'll also uh, pay attention to that. But um, if you're coming into Mexico on the 16th as, as a US citizen, that for the most part, I mean, you're coming down in, in a lot of cases, it'll be people coming down uh, that have your reservations that have, I mean, that you can come down. I personally would maybe recommend not coming with a boat or jet skis or something that says we're on vacation because you might be questioned if that is essential or not at the Mexican border, but I honestly don't know because I haven't been up to the border. Um, but that is a, a, a limitation on travel between US, Canada and Mexico actually. Um, the U.S. has put out very specific guidelines as to what is non-essential. So, for example, a lot of the Puerto Penasco community that are um, Mexican citizens and have travel permits or travel visas to go to the U.S., right now that is not available until after the 22nd. But that is for Mexican citizens going up to the U.S. for travel with, with a tourist visa. But if it's for trade or commerce, there are exceptions. So there's a list on the US, um, the US Embassy as well as the US Consulate page, which uh, the US Consulate for Nogales, or in Nogales, describing the non-essential in as far as going up to the US. Coming into Mexico, it's not as specific as, but the idea is that it's non-essential, non but um, that's that little window between the 16th and the 22nd where um, the mayor this morning said, if you're coming to Penasco and if, if Penasco, if we are able to open on the 16th as is the plan, that you can come in because you can, as a US citizen, you can go back. So it is important though, if you are coming from um, the US, that you have your proof of citizenship and, uh, or, or residency in the US to be able to return to the US because that's where that's where they'll be asking more questions thank you um rick nichols jerry says so happy for you guys opening soon hope to be not too far behind you behind you with margarita mermaids <laughs> so their their little new project it's cool one last question from rick valenzuela what is the local government doing to help resident help residents any food or financial assistance, and how can we help the community and the residents who are struggling? So this is a very good question, and uh, I think we've all know a little information we can share. Sammy, we'll start with you. Uh, okay. Uh, locally, I mean, I'll, I'll take the first part of the question as mm -hmm. far as the, the municipal government as well as, or the municipal administration as well as um, one of the local representatives. And then I think that there's also been some state aid that there have been, um, for the local administration, they have a program where they have 3,000 people on, I think it's 3,000 people on their roles, which are are people with disabilities and older individuals that they have been doing food baskets, uh, dispensas, as well as they had a program of a thousand pesos for, I think it was a um, hundred people or uh, different, different, different ways as far as economically. They have also at a city level, they have also um, suspended any cutting of water, for example, during April, May, and now they extended that to June. So if people hadn't made their water payments, but they extended the period where they're not cutting off water because water is necessary for washing hands. And um, so that's on a, uh, as far as the administration, the, there have been different, um, for example, in this case, representative from this district who has done a lot of distribution of food of um, in this case raw material raw material of potatoes and fish different things 
And then there are a number of organizations, most specifically uh, ones who have been doing meals. There have been, um, for example, uh, AIM Penasco, which is with Steps of Love. They've been doing dispensas since March 30th. And the dispensas are the food packages. And um, I believe they're about to, to have delivered over 10,000 of those. And those are our weekly packages for a family of four. They have also joined now with Gastro 638, which is the, a, a collective of chefs who from the beginning since March 22nd, more or less, have been doing meal preparation and taking meals out to different parts of the community. And they've also been doing food baskets. There is in San Rafael at the Rocky Point Medical Clinic, or it's the Palabras de Esperanza, they've been doing meals Monday through Friday. Kind of a, they, they already had a lunch program in effect, but they have expanded that and doing that Monday through Friday. Uh, near the dock area, for example, there are different people who have gotten together, in this case with Martin Martinez, uh, who are preparing meals, and it's really kind of off donations and also giving, giving out meals, and they have, um, they're, they're, they're doing their best at practicing social distancing. They're giving out masks. The city, different city officials have, have helped in different capacities with some, of these, um, with some of these activities. There is another group of volunteers who, in coordination with a lot of the local water plants, as well as um, the Umapas water plant, which is meant, meant to provide uh, drinking water to schools, but at this, in this case, it was... It, uh, its uh, purpose was kind of changed in order to help this group of volunteers. And, and it's important to note they've been working with a lot of, or they've gotten donations from a lot of different water plants so that they can distribute drinking water to particularly the outskirts of town. That's been in the past few weeks. And uh, currently a lot of those programs, because they've been going for so long, uh, also there's the Family of God, they're doing meals. I mean, so there are a lot of different projects out there from civil society, but what has really been amazing through all of this, difficult and heartbreaking and also amazing, is how the community of Pinasco has stepped I'm very up. proud. I'm very proud um, of our little community. But it's very, it's, it's been a long time, as we all know, and uh, so a lot of these programs are also kind of winding down, which is another reason why we're really hoping the city can open a little bit more June 16th. So a lot of the people who were unemployed found themselves unemployed completely at the end of March, which should have been our high tourism season. Um, hopefully they'll be able to get back into the workforce little by little. Rick made a little list there to shout out uh, where are we at. Shout out to Scott, Scott Chaos. He's done a lot of uh, work. Uh, getting together funds, Max's, Lions Club, Rotary Club, Family of God, Steps of Love, and so many more. Tony Ballesteros, so mm -hmm. shout out to our, our community. Um, if you want to donate, participate in the search bar there in Fan Puerto Piansco Fancy Community, just look charities, go to Rocky Point 360. I'm sure, Sammy, you have a list of charities that uh, people can participate. And as far as helping uh, the community, uh, you can participate in charities and just when you come into town, just follow the guidelines. That's a big help right there, uh, helping here the community. Um, and if I could, I mean, in talking about Scott, uh, mm -hmm. DJ Scott has done some amazing things for five, six, I think maybe seven weeks now. He has, um, he has done fundraisers every Saturday night. I think he might take a break this Saturday um, just because there were different things going on but um, maybe the funders will be for his own music on Saturday night, which would be great. But he's raised through his music over $16,000 for some of the, I mean, all, all of these different groups, some of them have been a thousand or 2000 or, and so it's really been amazing that through music, um, both he as well as, and I do need to do a shout out for um, Roger Klein and the Peacemakers, who this weekend would have had one of the biggest weekends in Rocky Point, which is Circus Mexicus. And um, they have done, they did a live stream where they promoted Steps of Love, for example, in helping Rocky Point, and then also will be doing one on June 13th and, uh, at, as a Circus Mexicus cyber celebration. Uh, since we can't all be here, then we can be there. 
um, and and also helping the community from afar because this has really been a community for them. Um, and so so music, Agua de Coco, for example, has been has has coordinated with the city every Saturday night to do an hour of salsa music and give out information about the different some of the different questions of the phases and so in that case it's not so much the fundraising but it is information so between groups organizations clubs music um it's really been amazing in that in that sense that's and even uh thank you jerry i i know you guys made a donation to barb's re uh dogs rescue was it yeah, so that that's awesome too. Helping helping puppies in in town, so uh, we're 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 fairly covered here in the community. Um, I think yeah, go for it. Well, um, it's one of the things. Did you back. hear me? Yeah, you're back. Um, it's one of the good things that uh, we like to uh, also think at uh, doggies and um, especially Shayna that loves loves the dogs. She's in love with them. I would say I love them too, but not as much love that they have. They do. <laughs> My brother and uh, Jorge Gaona and Shayna, they love the dogs, and um, they were thinking. And uh, f finally, uh, Shayna and George, and also our sir, uh, we think about it. And uh, George says, "There's everybody helping, helping the families, helping everybody." And it looked like Peñasco is only one, and uh, definitely. Peñasco can see the help of everybody being done to them. But how about the, about the animals? Mm -hmm. So my brother decided to, to bring uh, not too much, but uh, 800 pounds of, of, uh, of food for the doggies. So mm -hmm. it would be a good idea to, to go ahead and uh, help Barb. That she's always, always doing uh, recruiting doggies and helping doggies. Yes. So I love that. <laughs> So I think these are all the questions we have. Thank you guys for, for being here, for answering, answering all these questions, for giving us a little bit of time. Um, now, if anybody needs to contact you, wants to get in touch with you for more information, uh, America, how can we contact you? Um, my cell phone is 638-106-5574 or my office when that is open or on my Facebook, America Marquez. Perfect. Um, Jerry, how can we contact you? We also have our, uh, we, we're on Instagram, we're on Facebook, and also uh, we're at Twitter. You guys can message all the time. We always answer your uh, questions, ask and reservations. Uh, and um, also you can follow us and, um, or you can email me, jerrygaona37 at gmail.com. And I'll be more happy to answer any questions or help in anything I can do. Yes. And you can ask Sammy a lot of questions, but she also has <laughs> translation services she does an awesome job. So how can we contact you, Sammy? So for Rocky Point 360, uh, as Jerry mentions, um, we're, we're on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, uh, Rocky Point 360, email info at Rocky Point 360. On Facebook, for example, it's, Rock, it's the one that's Rocky Point 360. That's our page. Um, and then translation services, you can also, because it might be easier, you can also send a request to info at Rocky Point 360, or my email is my name, Chandra Kiesecker, <laughs> at gmail.com. And, uh, and that is certified translations. So that is uh, a lot of working with the real estate offices and lawyers here in town, as well as other translations. So glad to help. And we had William Pierce helping, up, helping us in the background with questions. Um, thank you all. Thank you for uh, coming and just uh, watching, watching. Thank you to all our panelists here for all the information. So I'm going to end the, the live feed and then uh, we'll just go to the after party. So, don't, <laughs> so you panelists, don't, don't, uh, don't step out.